Buying a jet ski can be confusing and knowing what accessories to get can be also just as confusing. I want to make this video to help expand on the list below, uh, down here, um, and make it easier to understand why I recommend what I do, or recommend what products down below. Please feel free to uh, leave a comment down below, uh, venture around the website, we have a lot of information throughout the website even a little thing right here for beginners if you're new to the watercraft world I have a lot of information just feel free to go through and just check it out but let's start off with the probably most important thing of any jet ski accessory and that's the life jackets um, pretty much it's, it's required everywhere you need you need a life jacket if you're going to be on a jet ski that goes for your driver passengers anybody that's on it even if the watercraft is off and floating in your dock i have personally been yelled at by the water patrol police for not having a life jacket on so before you get on the watercraft go ahead and put the life jacket on it is meant to save your life and it doesn't matter if you're a really good swimmer, still wear a life jacket. The life jacket's there just in case something happens to you. You fall off, not get passed out or whatever, or you had a full meal and you get a cramp and whatever. It's meant to save your life. It may, it's made to keep your head above water in case you fall in the water. You need a life jacket. And you also need one for every uh, passenger on the watercraft. So if it's a three-person watercraft, have at least three watercraft uh, life jackets. Um, and if uh, I actually recommend it, it, keep it like a variety, maybe five life jackets. I know it can be excessive per machine, but if you have a bunch of people that come over to ride your machine, you want at least have a, one of every size, from s small to extra, extra, extra large. You just don't know who's going to come by and want to ride the watercraft. And it's important to have the correct water uh, life jacket on, because if it's too big, it won't work. If it's too small, it definitely won't work. So it's very important to go into detail about that. And if I have a guide, I'll link a guide. I also have a life guide. And feel free to press the search up here and type in life jacket uh, guide. I have a guide on that. Very helpful about sizing and everything. Even the video on there too. Uh, next thing I recommend is a waterproof box for your phone. Most cell phones, I think a lot of them nowadays are waterproof, but that's not the point. The point is to get something to protect your phone um, just in case it falls in the water. If it's in a box, a waterproof box, it will float. No problem. And you want a bright colored one too, so you can easily see it because the water gets murky and kind of hard to see things in the water. But if it's a bright orange or bright yellow or bright blue, you can see it right there. Pick it back up. Um, and it's waterproof, it'll float, so it's nice to have that. You don't have to worry about it. Little details like that, it's very important. Um, a lot of watercraft today have dry storage on them, which is nice, but you still recommend to get a box for it because uh, the, the, the dry storage on the watercraft are these big containers and even the glove boxes are pretty huge in a lot of them nowadays and you don't want your phone to be bouncing around in the water with the, inside the storage there so you want a nice padded waterproof dry box. I think OtterBox makes one. You can get them anywhere but I have a link right here. Um, you can check them out. I highly recommend getting one. No matter what, it's probably the best thing you can get. That and a dry bag. I think we talked about dry bags down below. Uh, next thing on the list here is dock line. This is huge, huge, huge. Uh, there's two of them. Uh, this blue one right here is actually a regular dock line. This is what I use. And that's my spark. That's my hand. Uh, just a regular old double braided nylon dock line. No big deal. But if you want something simple and easy, because I know it can be kind of complicated to tie up a cleat when you're first new to the watercraft world, you can get a uh, bungee dock line. Super easy to use. Only use it for watercraft. They're not made to hold big boats. So if you're new to it and you want something simple, stick to that bungee dock line. Um, but I actually have a video right here from this awesome guy here. His captain right here uh, does a great job explaining how to tie up a cleat. Uh, he uses it for a boat, but same idea for a uh, jet ski. Very, very helpful. Anchors. Anchors, pretty big deal, um, especially if you want to dock in the middle of the water. Uh, it's a lot of information to go over, so I actually have an entire guide. So if you click that link, it'll go to this little uh, guide about anchoring your jet ski and what's the best type of anchor to use. Uh, I pretty much go into a lot of these videos. I go into a lot of detail on this one, so it's a lot to take in. recommend you check it out, read it. Next up is my personal favorite accessory is the solar panel. 
uh, every year, uh, Watercraft customers would come in and the battery would be dead. That's like the number one thing uh, I would see. Battery flat, jet ski won't start, won't turn on, no beeping, no nothing. And all because the battery went flat because you don't you don't use it during the winter months, especially during the winter months. Sometimes you don't use it for the summer months, maybe a couple times out of uh, the whole summer months. Um, if you don't use your battery on your jet ski or you don't use your jet ski at all, the battery just goes flat. It dies and it doesn't really recover and this is what the goal of a solar panel is for it is to keep basically keep the battery alive keep smacking it back to life so when you don't ride it the sun is charging it like I have in my section my spark right there with the solar panel I use it to charge it with and it just keeps the battery keep going it keeps it going that battery right now is actually three years old now so it's still the original battery still good all because I use a solar panel uh, you can use a regular wall charger. Don't go above two amps of charging. That is very, very bad. You want to stay below two amps. Uh, lower the amperage. It's fine. Uh, it just slow. It just charges slowly. Uh, but it's important. That's the reason why I recommend the solar panels. They, they they charge very slow. You don't have to be near a wall outlet to charge it. So that's huge, especially for winter storage. You can put it off to the side or it's out in your dock and your dock doesn't have power, solar panel is the way to go. Uh, I re want to actually recommend uh, you check out. And uh, most of them are pretty much waterproof, those solar panel chargers, so you don't have to worry about the rain or nothing getting to them. Um, don't go above uh, 5 watts. Uh, I recommend staying around 1.8, 2.5 watts. That's ideal. Because you go too much wattage, you'll overcharge the battery. And that's a whole other issue there. Um, but stick to that. 1.8, 2.5 watts, that's perfect. Or even 5 watts, don't exceed that. That's fine too. But this is huge, a uh, highlight. I even say very most important. Huge, huge. Because batteries can be expensive, so uh, I would stick to solar panel. Like I said, I own three years on my original battery on my CD Spark, and that's, uh, that's huge. And uh, fenders and bumpers, this is what you put on the side of the watercraft, like right here. To keep it from rubbing against the docks and all that. This is something you need, especially if you're docking, coming from off a trailer and putting it to the dock so you can park the trailer and hop back on. This keeps it from rubbing against the side because it rubs against these fenders right here. Uh, next up, it's huge too. This is probably just as important as the uh, solar panel shock tube or uh, impeller protectors, is also how they're called. Uh, a picture here, this is actually pool noodles. And the reason why I put the pool noodles there because you can actually use them and honestly they work just as fine and they're cheap too but uh the shock tube is purpose-built so if you want something that's purpose-built made for that uh, work and the pull noodle will work too but you have to get a pull noodle that's hollow like these here and you run the rope through it basically what this does it keeps you from accidentally sucking up uh your tow line or even dock line too but especially this, this is another thing i see people do like the very first thing they'll do is go out and ride and they'll pull somebody on a tube or a wakeboard or whatever, and they, they fall off or whatever, and they have to circle back around. But they always suck up their own rope. I see this all the time. And it's pretty easy to do. And even experienced people like me, it, it, it's easy to do. You want, you want to avoid backing up at all costs, when, especially when you're pulling someone, because you start backing up. Yeah, you basically, you're riding a 200 horsepower or 150 horsepower, whatever. Drawing a giant vacuum and it will suck up anything that's in its way, even tow ropes. And once it gets sucked in there, it gets wrapped around the uh, impeller shaft, drive shaft, and it shuts the engine off. I'm going to go more in details what can help you if that happens. But usually, when it gets wrapped around there, it's so tight and so strong that you usually have to cut that tow rope back out. So you have to fiddle with that. And of course, on this website here, there's a search box at the top. You can Type in sucked up rope, and there I am. I got a little information you can use to get the rope out, but to keep that from happening, I highly recommend a shock tube, shock tube, or also call it impeller protector. That is huge. There's actually the guide right here on what to do if you suck up a uh, tow rope. And of course, whatever you do, do not flip it. A lot of information in that guide right there. And for fun, you can get tubes. I'm a big fan of the Big Mabel tubeable tube. I think it's fun. It's actually there. Like, there's a picture of it. That thing's so versatile, so fun. It's a blast. Um, 
so cool. I even got more uh, crazy ones and odd ones. You got there's a lot of tubes out there. I recommend taking a look at them. But if you want a good all around towable tube, the big Mabel is fun. And you'll need the accessories like a tow rope and the inflator for it. Uh, you can get 12 volt ones and get 12 volt plug put onto your uh, watercraft plugs. And a lot of them actually come with 12 volt plugs here nowadays, especially in 2018. But the folding paddle is the next one, and that's the one I was telling you about coming up after you suck up rope. We, like if you suck up rope, what do you do? Because uh, the drive shaft is seized up because the rope got it pulled taut, so the engine won't start. So you're just sitting, you're just a sitting duck out there. So what do you do? You, you can either call like C tow or somebody's gonna tow you back in, or have an extra folding paddle. And like I said, a folding paddle is something you never need until you really need one. <laughs> and personally, I've used one twice, and it has been great. That is hugely helpful, hugely, hugely helpful if something happens. Uh, I, if, there's been times where I've sucked up rocks because I was in too shallow of water. That's another thing you have to watch out. You want to start your watercraft about waist deep water and shut the engine off right before you get to waist deep water and coast in if you're beaching it. Because you're riding a very powerful vacuum and it will suck up anything. And I, another question I would get is why don't they put like a screen protector or some keep from the rocks and all that from being sucked up into the watercraft? They would if they could. The more stuff you put in, in, in front of the intake grate of the watercraft or jet ski, uh, the more the engine has to work. Even the slightest bit, there's actually an intake grate there, and that's not protecting you from much, but it's it's still protecting you from big rocks. And that still slows you down, but don't remove that because that's, that's another can of worms. Um, but the more stuff you put in front of that intake rate, the more you slow down. And I know some people think, well, they can put like a little slight mesh there. Well, slight mesh wouldn't stop most of the stuff and it'll get obliterated itself. And and the more restriction you have, the slower the watercraft will go. Even the slightest bit will slow you greatly down. It's a, it's a, it's an art, really, for them to make an intake rate that will work perfect so you have enough power for moving and, long, and, and enough protection for the pump. So I highly recommend a folding paddle, one in each watercraft. That's all you need. No, no need to go too crazy with it. Uh, but it is very helpful, and they fold nice and neat, so they don't take up much room. I highly recommend getting one. Then you have a bicycle lock. Uh, so this is more for people who keep their watercraft on the dock on those floating ports. Uh, basically, I recommend a uh, actually master lock makes the Python adjustable key cable lock. Cable locks are super, super nice, especially the master lock one uh, down here. What you do is you run the cable through the front uh, hook of your watercraft, and there's usually a cleat on either your dock or the floating port. You wrap it around there, and you put it in, and it goes click, 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 lock it with the key. Perfect. But I still recommend, I still recommend a uh, dock line for actually holding it to the watercraft. So you will have dock line attached to the f cleat along with a lock attached. So you want those double things I wouldn't recommend relying 100% on the uh, bicycle lock or the cable lock itself that's more of a deterrent than to slow them down because it's hard to cut through those locks because there's thick cables uh, and the dock line is just for if you have a rough storm coming through you got two things holding it keeping it attached because I've seen I've seen watercraft come off dock before and it's better to be safe than sorry uh, so make sure you have both a dock line and your uh, master lock cable there too. Uh, whistle and air horn, that's actually one of those things that most states require you to have. Uh, for whistles, I recommend to have a whistle for every life jacket you have. Go ahead and attach it to it. It has to be within reach. That's another thing they will look out for when you get pulled over by the water police. The whistle has to be within reach. So have it dangling a little bit so you can pull it up and blow into it. Um, if you don't want to put your life jacket, make sure there's one in your glove box, somewhere that's within reach, somewhere easy to get to. It's also a safety device. Very important you have one. Most watercraft do not come with it. Uh, I think a few do, but they're usually the more expensive limited edition models. Uh, but I highly recommend getting one, especially one for every life jacket. You can get an air horn. I actually had an air horn. Air horns work fine, but I prefer the safety whistle because air horns, they don't last forever. Um, and air horns, I mean, a safety whistle lasts a lot longer. Hugely helpful, especially if something happens and you get stranded and you don't have a paddle. What do you do? Or you have a very far way to go paddling? And there's, 
you can signal for help, and that's huge. Dry bag is kind of like the uh, uh, phone box storage, waterproof phone storage. But this is like this is actually my personal move by riding gloves. Yes, I do have riding gloves. I highly recommend them, yeah, especially if you're new. Your hands are not used to the chafing that goes on, especially at the the thumb area right there, because you got the death grip on, and you're in, you're surprised at how fast these things are, because it's, it's amazing how powerful these watercraft are, especially. You've only ridden rental ones. The, the non-rental ones are freakishly fast because they don't have any governors on them. Um, so I highly recommend checking out some riding gloves. I have some down below. Uh, but the bag, I recommend you want bright color. You know, keep I keep a rag in mine, my gloves. Sunscreen. Sunscreen is pretty big. Talk about more of that down below. Uh, rash guard, if you don't want to keep wearing sunscreen, you can put some rash guard on. I have a full guide here about uh, what to wear. I even have a guide on what what not to wear. I didn't never thought I would have to make that, but I did. <laughs> uh, basically, when you, you don't want to wear like expensive jewelry because things get lost. I've lost a lot of money and, and stuff because I was careless. But nowadays, with my dry bag and stuff like that, uh, it's it's perfect. I haven't lost anything, knock on wood, <laughs> in a long time. So that's why I highly recommend getting a, a dry bag like that. That's hugely helpful. In the right clothing and gear, that link will take you to what I recommend you wear. And this is for the jet ski accessories right here. I have another guy that goes in more detail. I even order it for what's the most important to the least important. Um, but if you're going to be trailing your jet ski, there's a couple things you want to get, like the tongue jack like this. This is, There's like a little lever right here. You pull this out. This whole thing rotates this way. So then in this, I can use that wheel. There's a little handle right here. You can rotate that uh, handle, and it's, it's going to jack it off of the uh, ball of the truck. So you actually roll it around. It's easier to put on, especially if the tongue is really heavy. You want about 10 to 15 pounds on the tongue. Uh, but this makes it easier to move around your garage or wherever you're storing it. And it makes it easy to put it back on because you just rotate this when it's up here. So you rotate that way. Very, very helpful. Hugely helpful. And they're very affordable if you ask me. Uh, I highly recommend checking them out getting one if you don't have one in your trailer already. And we've got a couple of locks. Pretty self-explanatory. A lock that, that goes up in right there locks the coupler so no one can still ride off with your trailer very important for security reasons uh, I also recommend a strap on the rear of the watercraft this is actually my spark with the strap I use an orange strap like bright colors makes it easy to see uh, strap down I have one on each side so it could be a little redundant but it's better to be re redundant than have nothing no, nothing at all um, the reason why you want to strap it down to the back of the trailer because if you go over bumps you don't want the back of the watercraft to be banging against the bottom of the trailer you want them to be as one unit and another reason why is i've personally broken the front strap of my trailer before not on purpose it's just they get old and they'll get they wear out the sun dries them out and they break so this uh thank goodness i had a, a strap on the rear because that watercraft have been on the road and <laughs> you don't want that that's a it's a pain in the butt to deal with um so you want the strap in the rear, at least one strap back there. Trust me, if you're going more than five feet, you want to strap the rear down. You can even get pull tight ones too. That works just as fine too. You just literally just pull tight. Um, I have a video here where it goes in more detail about uh, how to use a strap. And it's a very good life lesson to learn. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, I don't. It's not my video, but someone else made it. It does a pretty good job explaining it. Highly recommend checking it. And of course, safety kit and emergency kit. You can actually get these as one kit. Uh, I usually use a Baylor tube, like a safety kit right here. It has like a lot of light and a couple other things. And the first aid kit's always nice to have because you just never know what's going to happen. Um, especially if you have some sunscreen on you. You just, just never know. Uh, I've personally been hit by a uh, trap between a boat and a jet ski before. But luckily I was near the dock. So it's you just never know what's going to happen. And who knows you could get a bee sting I have, I've seen it happen before so safety kit sting cream there's always room for a safety kit on your watercraft I recommend getting one and cleaner polish I have a couple recommendations here uh, make sure you keep a cover on your watercraft and if you can spray it down with some vital protector on the seat uh, when you put the before you put the cover on your watercraft you want to dry the seat off so there's not any moisture in there because you don't want the mold, uh, the mold to grow anywhere on your seat. That's what causes the, the splotching and, and spots on the seats. You want to make sure you cover that up. 
And if you want more, I actually have a lot more information in my 107 tips and accessories guide. So it's a lot of information. It's not it's not all accessories. Um, there's a lot of tips. Tips mostly at the bottom. I kind of redo everything here. It's a lot more detailed. Uh, more pictures. Uh, boat numbers is another good thing to have. Every watercraft uh, everywhere actually needs. It's like a license plate for your watercraft. Uh, more things, fire extinguisher, every watercraft should have one. Sometimes they come with them. Uh, usually the dealer gives it to you to keep you legal. If you don't have one, definitely get one. Uh, and they'll see and people tell me, well, I don't need a fire extinguisher. If it's on fire, I'll jump in the water. Well, yeah, it, duh, who wouldn't? But if your buddy's watercraft's on fire and they don't know what to do and they're panicking and they're worried and whatever, you go for your fire extinguisher and you try to help them the best you can. If not, you push them, you knock them in the water, make sure they have a life jacket on, of course, first. Or get them on your watercraft so that let the thing, I mean, there's not much you can do if a watercraft's on fire, but fire extinguishers is smart to have. Emergency light, too. And of course, you can't drive your watercraft past uh, when the sun sets. It's illegal in most places. Uh, skier down flag is huge to have, especially if you do a lot of pulled sports and all that. As you raise it up so people know you have someone in the water, they've fallen off. GPS, I like to use my phone, but there's actually purpose-built waterproof ones with chop plotters. Uh, portable jump pack, not huge in need. That's nice to have, especially once a day, because I got the USB ports on them, so you can plug in, charge your phone while you're out there too. And 12 volt plug for your accessories like your inflator, depth finder is always nice to have. Uh, clothing, wetsuit bottoms. Uh, if you don't know about the wetsuit bottom saga, there's a sticker uh, usually on the rear of your watercraft that goes into full details. Every watercraft nowadays actually has that sticker, so. It's used in the rear. It's a warning sticker. I just read it if you don't know what's going on. Uh, gloves, like I was talking about, it's actually the ones I actually use. Very, very helpful. Super awesome, especially if you're near your hands. Not used to it because you got the death grip and you're holding on for dear life. And shoes. I actually have a guide on what shoes to wear. This is actually huge. I actually recommend checking this out because you don't want to wear just any shoes. Um, you make water shoes. That look, some actually look like just regular tennis shoes, and they're super comfortable. And that's what I use. Highly recommend it. Uh, rain poncho, jacket, it's not really needed, but it's, uh, as someone's been stuck in the rain, it, it feels like your face is drowning because you got all this rain and it hurts. The water, the rain hurts if you try to go like over 20 miles an hour. So I highly recommend just to have like one spare one because you never know. If not, if you get stuck in the rain, you can hopefully have a hat to keep your face covered. It's, it's just, it's not fun. Uh, coolers is another one too. Uh, you don't want big coolers. You want coolers that are soft coolers so they're easy to fit in storage because you don't want to buy this big cooler and you find out, oh, man, this doesn't fit in my storage compartment in my watercraft because the opening compartment of the storage compartment of watercraft are actually smaller than what you might think. And you don't want to get a cooler rack. That's Don't do that. Unless you're a fisherman, don't get a cooler rack. That's not worth it because you have to drill holes in the watercraft. And nobody wants The average Joe doesn't want to do that. Uh, water bottle holders are cool to have. You do a lot of that, a lot of writing. Just have a regular water bottle. Put in the front storage compartment or the glove box of your watercraft. And I go over docking and all that. Floating docks, where you can keep your floating docks. More tow sports, what ropes to use. Booster ball is super helpful to have. If you do a lot of pool sports. Even go down to even Sea-Doo accessories. The Sea-Doo have a ski pile on, which raises uh, the tow point of the dock or the line up higher. You have something for the passenger that ride, uh, rides backwards to hold on to. So worth it. It makes your ski a lot more viable. Even the Wick Edition sea Dews actually have that standard. That's a very, very popular watercraft to get. Uh, retractable dock line, snap and fenders. That's actually one of the sea Dew Sparks actually already have the holes for them, so it just snaps right in. And the Sea-Doo Spark Accessor, we have an even deeper guide there. Registration numbers. It's actually important that you get the right Sea-Doo stickers because the, the Polytech body, body is actually very unique because it, it doesn't stick very well with regular stuff. So you have to be very careful with that. You want to buy the right, right stuff and make sure you clean that surface area very well. You're talking about the Sea-Doo keys. And I can't forget Yamaha. I also have Kawasaki down here in trailer accessories. Maintenance items, oil change kits if you want to do that on your own, oil extractor, spark plugs. I have a lot of information there, even how to winterize it there. Speakers, insurance, talk about that. Hoist straps, these are things you don't need. You don't need a hoist strap unless you're a business or you do a lot of moving of watercraft on land. Sea do uh, the sea uh, sea scooters are okay. It's, they were they were great for like like pools and stuff like that. Racing home unless you're gonna be racing. 
uh, more helpful information. The manual is right there, starting. Um, this is huge right here. I have a lot of information, especially for beginners. There's a lot of information here, MPGs. And can you run it out of the water? What it really costs to own one? A lot of information. Feel free to explore, see what's going on, and leave comments down below. Write your reply right there if you have any questions. Thank you, guys.